In the last 24 hours, Google didn't just update Gemini, they sent a very loud message to the entire AI industry. Gemini 3 Pro makes it clearer than ever that Google is pulling ahead and it's going to be extremely hard for anyone to match their ecosystem or the pace at which they are accelerating at. And listen, I've been testing this model nonstop, especially inside uh, their vibe coding tool, Google AI Studio, and guys, the leap is real. It can generate beautiful landing pages, full prototypes, 3D scenes, and even advanced physics simulations. You know, it can do fluid dynamics, interactions, collisions very, very well within a single shot or just a few. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through a few things that I built with Gemini 3 Pro inside uh, the coding tool and explain uh, good things, bad things, any limitations I found uh, with this model. So yeah, we have a lot to cover, so let's get straight to it. But yeah, before I show you any demos or nice stuff, we need to talk about why Gemini 3 Pro does feel like a turning point because this model isn't just representing the fact that it's just numerically better. So Google is now improving at a rate that honestly, it's going to be extremely hard for OpenAI or Anthropic to match. And it's not because the other teams are brilliant, I'm not saying that, although uh, Google DeepMind teams are, are correct, but it's more because Google's ecosystem is operating as one huge machine. Specifically, if these models are getting better and better, they're just gonna have better access and better use to the extensive library of APIs that they have, they've been developing over time. And yeah, this is, I would say, the real asset to advancing so quick. So yeah, everything is connected. And Gemini 3 Pro is the first model where you can really feel that advantage, especially on things like Google AI Studio, Google Anti-Gravity. If you want me to make a video about Google Anti-Gravity, I can go ahead and Google Stitch. So you using Gemini 3 Pro under these, you're gonna see the difference. But yeah, hopefully you can see how everything is connected. And Gemini 3 Pro is the first model where you can really feel that advantage, especially using them inside Google AI Studio, Google Anti-Gravity if you do have access to it, and Google Stitch as well. So yeah, let's have a look at the benchmarks now. Although I do believe that uh, the benchmarks are a bit biased and it's usually game a cat of mouse because we do understand that, you know, the models are essentially going to get better and better and better until they reach uh, a certain threshold. But yeah, I want to go through a few of the benchmarks that I do find interesting for this release. So the first one is humanity's last exam. And although it does feel like a few percentage, a few percentages on top of uh, GPT-5.1 with clots on it actually being a big jump, if you think it's just a few percentages, let me explain you what this exam is. So it's essentially a bunch of questions designed to break language models. These are hand-picked questions by humans. And these questions uh, are also a combination of, uh, part of them are questions that were, could not have been answered by the previous models. So you're always gonna get new, fresh questions, you know, surfacing up that no previous models at least have, have beaten yet. So yeah. 3 Pro scored 37.5%, which is a huge jump over 5.1. And more importantly, uh, you know, this represents the performance on questions that are, you know, should not be in training data. So this shows the ability to, for the model to have fluid reasoning and not really memorization. The second test that we're gonna have a look at is Arc AGI2, which is a continuation of the first version, which is one of the hardest tests of true general reasoning. So these are visual logic puzzles where memorization is essentially impossible. If the model doesn't genuinely understand the patterns, it fails. And yeah, Gemini 3 Pro doesn't just improve, but it almost doubles GPT 5.1 uh, score. So as you can see over here. So I'm just saying as a massive leap, and it's not only the progress between other models, it's also the progress from its latest Pro model. So it went from 4.9 to 31.1. And these are not easy tests once again, okay? So the jump between models and its previous version are both large, which gives you an indication of how quick the Google DeepMind uh, team is working, how hard they're working. And yet, if you weren't able to tell by the name, this is the kind of benchmark that researchers use to track AGI progress. So this shift is rather meaningful. And then you either have uh, other common metrics, which are good to uh, understand as well, such as video MMMU or MMMU Pro. They're both for multimodal understanding, but this one is mainly from videos. And we can see that Google uh, 
uh, is in the lead as it has been with the previous models as well. But yeah, it is a, a big difference, but I just expect these to keep going up, uh, you know, the metrics to keep improving and improving. So nothing interesting over here, but I saw this one, this bending bench to one. And I'm really interested because as I was scrolling down, I saw uh, USDs and I'm like, okay, this is interesting. So it measures long horizon agentic tasks. What does that mean? Well, they're actually doing as the name suggests. We're essentially giving this LLM, which we package as an agent, uh, the task with uh, handling a vending machine business. Okay, as the ag and the agents uh, essentially need to, need to handle all the roles that come with a vending machine business, such as ordering, inventory management, pricing, right? We give them all the tools that they need in order to run the vending machine. And the objective is to make as much money as possible. So within the same span of time, Google Gemini 3 Pro managed to make 5.4, well, 5.5K compared to the previous nearly 600 from 2.5 Pro, which is a massive increase against the 3.8 and the 1.5 from Claude Sonnet 4.5 and GPT 5.1. So still massive increase. And this is another metric that researchers are looking for when it comes to AGI, right? And you might be thinking, well, how does this help me building automation, software, products uh, with AI in it? Well, it just means fewer hallucinations as always, better composition, more correct code, more accurate simulations. This is a new trend, more reliable multi-step pipelines, especially more than be much more than before and better UI and 3D generation. So the model is starting to stir into the design rat over here, which is very interesting. And you'll see now in one of the demos. Let me show you this first thing that I built in Google AI Studio with uh, Gemini 3 Pro. It's essentially this uh, engineering simulation of a V10 engine. Okay, and I, and I started realizing that they have purposefully made the model at Gemini whatever possible. Uh, probably because they know people like me are, are screen recording this and sharing it with other people, which is pretty smart. So let's start the engine. Yeah, it has noise, uh, so it has sound, so I'm not going to do it now because I want to be able for you to hear me, but there's different stuff in the view mode. You can add transparent, you can add x-ray. This is not fully well defined because it was just a few prompts, but it was just one prompt to define the whole thing. Uh, we have a wheel over here actually, and the clutch works. So look at, look at how nice this looks. Uh, you can change the RPM as well. You can press the gas, uh, but let me show you this. So it actually engages in first gear, but check out that if I actually disengage, the wheel is going to stop. So it actually got the physics behind that right. And this is fascinating to see because uh, I was actually an engineer before. This is pretty cool. Now let me put some sound. Okay, you get the idea. And you can see how once I stop everything, these, this keeps spinning. Uh, on first gear, uh, switch to neutral. Basically, that's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure it got the accurate the RPM uh, up and running correctly. Uh, but yeah, I like the disengagement. I didn't ask for any, any of the transmission stuff, but it did it anyways, which is very nice. Now this one is a landing page, okay, that I've made uh, for one of my ideas. Uh, it didn't get the text right, to be honest, but these are things that it, had, it has added that I wasn't expecting. So the other 3D shapes behind, we make it, makes it look nice. This mouse uh, hovering thing, which is really nice as well. So it's getting really good at design from what it looks like. Discovery talent, it added the floating elements already. This highlight is really nice. And you can see that it also added this for some reason, although I didn't tell it to do. I mean, the, the prompt was, was, yeah, I told it to change a few things in the, in the prompt. So I told it to change the, the font. Uh, but apart from that, I didn't touch anything else. And you can see how we have this interesting hover uh, logic over here, which is really, really nice. And yeah, some more, some more design, but yeah, totally to keep it simple, but given how simple I, I asked it uh, to be, uh, it still added this, these 3D, 3D objects, which is really nice. And yeah, used WebGL. So this is the, the renderer. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. This one is one that I'm particularly interested in, particularly surprised uh, in how it did this in one prompt or two. So it's actually calculating differential equations. So it's doing some calculus in the background and it's not easy calculus either to be able to define uh, all these areas that you see uh, in a dynamic fashion, right? So we have essentially the, the stream of air, but then we also have the areas of higher pressure in red and areas of blue pressure. And as I told you, I was an engineer and I studied this and this looks very, very accurate. 
So you can change, this is a, the air, an airfoil, okay, or you could say the cross section of, uh, of the wing of an airplane, and we are able to give it different angles of attack and a higher airspeed. And something that I'm very interested about, okay, I told you that it's calculating some, some complex equations, but look when it does this. So when I decrease it and then I quickly increase the airspeed, you're gonna see that you get these little um, Y balls over here, right? and the shape that they're doing once I, you know, change the airspeed is it's rather rather complex to calculate. So I'm I'm more than surprised that it's able to do that. So you see how it just folds. That that is rather complex. So it's interesting to see how how it's able to do that. The reason I'm telling you all this is because Gemini 3 Pro is making a statement here with how you know you can approach simulation, especially for learning, which is uh, I'd say a rather untapped market. And aside from all the uh, landing pages and other 3D simulators that I could have shown you, uh, I thought it would be nice to just build a an app, right? A, a just normal app from an idea that I had. And and yeah, so it's gonna create visuals and then attach attach audio to it. And well, I was planning on using VO 3.1 over here, but the problem with the usage of it is that, well, they're kind of trapping your usage within Google AI Studio, right? So ideally you would want to use uh, enterprise APIs in order to make uh, a prototype work uh, over here. That's something that I realized because I think they cap you if you're using, if you just tell it to connect to VO 3.1 or any Google models, uh, they are going to have a separate endpoint, I believe, uh, into all of this. So uh, let me pull this out quickly. So yeah, so basically if you see over here, it basically uh, um, cuts you off at three, three or two uh, generations per minute uh, or requests per minute, which is, well, pretty low. Same with the Flash TTS. It's three out of 10 and out of one. So uh, you wanna make sure you prompt Google AI Studio over here to use other APIs. Maybe, you know, the enterprise APIs from Google or just go and, you know, force it to use something like Clink or Open Router or any, any of those models. And so just gonna bring that out quickly and I'm gonna show you uh, an output of this. So how, how does this work? In the last 24 hours. So I give it a general prompt and then it breaks into different scenes and then you can use Clink change the script even, you can record it yourself. Uh, but let's go to a new scene. So essentially you would generate the voice and once that's done, then you can generate the visual. I asked it to put it in the API key. We're gonna look into that now. So let's go ahead and generate the visual. And there you go. Well, this is the fourth scene. Let's just play that. It's not just better, it's better in the areas that matter most. Reasoning, spatial logic, long horizon planning, and complex multi-step. Of course, there's a lot of other things to consider, but this is essentially just a prototype and it's great because it took me uh, if only a few prompts to get this going. And yeah, the point with this is that you can build really good prototypes, then show to your stakeholders in order to validate the idea. And actually, if you wanna see this idea moving forward, I would be interested to uh, building this further properly, obviously, uh, with, with a team of engineers. So let me know if, uh, I think you guys voted on the school community, but I'd love to hear your comments below. If you think this is a good idea, I'm happy to build a landing page and have you guys try this out. But yeah, let me know. Uh, you can see here that we have multiple scenes and then the idea is that we can collate all of them together into one single thing. So let me merge the scene over here. And I think we didn't merge the scene in this one. So the idea is that we can merge all these uh, and it has no sound. So as you see, there's a lot of things that we can download the MP4, can we? It seems like there's an error for that. So this is the nice thing as well. It's gonna catch the errors as we go and you're able to auto fix them. So this is really nice. It tells you the scenes that we're doing at the moment, we're running on at the moment. But, but yeah, I mean, check this out. So imagine with the sound and all that, what you were able to do with this. So uh, you, you get the point. It doesn't work fully, but it, uh, Google gives you the right amount of tools within their ecosystem in order for you to build an app here and then connect via APIs to whatever you need. Google Maps API, VO3, you know, any models. And yeah, it, this, is, this is the best move. This is the reason why they could technically keep this tool free in order to create prototypes because they're making money off the APIs that you connect in the background once you're building your app, right? So it's really, really, really smart play from Google. So, so yeah, I mean, if you're interested in, in seeing this idea build further, I can always bring a team of engineers. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about this. So overall, it's really, really nice to see this launch for Gemini 3 Pro. And there's a, a lot of good things about it as I listed out in this video, but let's touch on, let's just recap on the strengths. And also I wanna introduce some weaknesses specifically for building apps and prototypes that I've done with Google AI Studio. 
So it's exceptional, okay? When I say it's exceptional, I mean it. It's, it's really good at complex problem solving, especially when you give it, you know, complex math, given the metrics that you saw, right? It's, it's good at the Amy 2025 metric, best in class at the moment, shockingly capable reasoning intelligence. Yes, I've seen this by building these and, and a few other ones. This is the main thing. It's incredible for rapid prototyping and app creation. And one of the strongest models for generating media visuals. I mean, we have been seeing these with the previous models and I don't think any other company is gonna take the throne. They're known for uh, multimedia models, right? They're known for being world-class at that. But there's weaknesses as well, okay? It's not like every video that they tell you all the good things. I wanna also point out the bad things about it and the things where, you know, uh, this model can improve. So it's really bad at understanding, especially imaginative or narrative writing. So I'll give uh, my hats to Grok or OpenAI models for this. Uh, the outputs still carry an AI feel in some other context, although this is something hard to beat or hard to quantify because if you just give it good context, then it should be able to do that. So uh, if you want to see other, you know, other outputs, especially on landing pages where you can tell the most, I, I do think that they have, you can always check X. So on X, people show you what they have built. But I mean, most of the stuff that I have built here, the landing page and all that, it has been within a few prompts. So I feel if you tweak it further, you, you can get a really good results. So yes, yeah, so I want to show you some examples of projects or, or prototypes of apps that uh, people have been working further on. Good to notice that it's really good at using this, these visual libraries, just 3.js and WebGL, as I showed you before, uh, in order to generate these really cool, really uh, immersive 3D environments, right? As, as you can see here, uh, it's doing it with this kind of Minecraft simulator, which is really nice. But look, this is another example of a, a V8 engine over here. So, I mean, this looks much more sleeker than mine. I'm, I'm sure that th this person has spent a bit more time in refining uh, the meshing and so on and so on. So even for, well, let's go on to gravity again. But yeah, I mean, you, you, you get the idea. Uh, you can build really nice landing pages with this. I mean, look at this one. You see how it's able to do this? So sure, it has an AI feel, but I, yeah, exactly. If you refine it and you give it the right context, then, then it's, look. I mean, look at this. Have you ever seen something like this? built by a coding agent. This is beautiful. So this is crazy, this is crazy. So based on what I have shown you, I think this is more for one or few shot prompts. Cause I think that if you, you know, if you keep prompting and giving it enough context and images and so on, uh, you can get to a point where you have seen in the X post that I have shown you. Uh, geared more toward experimentation and research than everyday use, yes, specifically with your ability to be able to create uh, the 3D models and stuff like that, yes. Also because it's really, really good at complex problem solving. So, uh, you know, it could help you perhaps with any of, any of the visualizations that we have if you're in a research role, PhD role, you know, you wanna turn those into life in order to make it, you know, in order to make your research interactive. I think this is, this is great. This model is great for it. Pricing is on the higher end, but, uh, you know, once again, uh, the prices are going to drop. It's just at the start, they are expensive, especially for VO3, I think over time, we're gonna see this drop as we have essentially more computing power available for us. And yeah, well, I think this is more for Google AI Studio, which I agree as well. It's not for developers. That's the whole point though. So I don't think this is a weakness if you are a non-technical person. I think this is actually a plus. So I'm gonna remove it. But yeah, this is from me trying it out for the past week. And, and yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna leave it there because I think that's all you need to know about Gemini 3 Pro. These main points, uh, what the bigger picture is with the Google AI ecosystem and yeah, the specific uh, metrics, right? The, the, uh, the increase in percentage of the metrics or the benchmarks that I've shown you. So those are the important things. And, and yeah, go ahead and try it out for yourself, please. I think it's uh, much better. You learn more if you test things out for yourself, get your hands dirty. But yeah, I'm gonna leave the video there. So give me a thumbs up and a follow if you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, please let me know why down in the comments below. And if you have any other suggestions, anything that I missed out, also drop it in the comments below. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.